was mentioned about uh, David and Goliath thing. So, yeah, my name is David. Uh, it's actually David Eagle in English. So, now we got Kain Estonia. So, safe stuff. Uh, with Brussels, I have one connection. I'm one of two special advisors to the Vice President uh, Anzip. So, uh, yeah, I have also some work. Every time I have, I'm here, I have to appear in front of him and salute and, and, uh, and describe what is new in, 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 in tech in the world. But I'm not talking about that. So, uh, I'm the second Estonian here today to, do, to talk about uh, borderless stuff and how this all will change uh, the way how we see the world, basically. And uh, I, to set the scene, uh, just a quick couple of examples. Uh, do you remember how you bought music 20 years ago? If you don't remember, then it's on the screen. Like, so, uh, so 20 years ago, the only way to buy music, uh, like not the only way, that the most common way was, was CDs. And, and you had to go to the local music store, you bought one CD where you actually liked one song. So to get the meaningful set of or playlist of music, you had to buy loads, loads of loads of lots of CDs. And it was expensive. It was changed. Uh, first big mover was Apple, who started to push that, okay, maybe we could sell only one song on time. So you don't have to buy the whole album. That was the first change. Another change was the thing that we don't buy CDs anymore. So we like to stream music uh, from our phones, from computers, everywhere. So what has happened between the last, like, not even 20 years, but 17 years, is the technology has changed. We have moved from CDs to the streaming. And the way how we buy music, or like how we, how we use music, has changed. Instead of buying albums, we have now, like I'll say, streaming playlists, or like we follow certain DJs or like whoever we, whoever we like. So, in 20 years, radical technological change plus behavioral change has happened with less than 20 years. Another example. Um, 10 years ago, it was a Finnish company who owned more than 50% of uh, smartphone market. It was a Finnish company. And five years later, or six years later, nothing. Or like, almost nothing. Again, like, if you don't act and if you don't follow the trends uh, around you, the winter can come fast. So that's the point of, 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 of the scene. I mean, like, um, the things what, what we see coming, the trends what we see coming in government sector, like how the governments are actually operated and how, how they, they provide services, it can be seen from two, two perspectives. Winter is coming, and it all will hit us, or it's a perfect storm, especially for, for Davids against Goliaths. Even small countries can become big. And to explain that, Stephen is like up there, I just always have to remember, like, uh, because from... From, from this part of the world, you most probably don't know, so we are up there, so the same latitude as Alaska. So uh, we have nine, ten months, very bad weather. And then we have thing that we call summer, but you most probably call it winter. Uh, there was a map uh, drawn of, of Game of Thrones in Europe, so that was the winter fall. So, so, but what is important to see on this picture is that Estonia land-wise is actually bigger than Switzerland, or Netherlands, or Belgium. But we only have 1.3 million people. And not all of them actually have ID cards, because we don't push children to use ID cards. Like, so, so children are off. Uh, and so we have lots of land and not too many, too, not too, too, not too many people. So we, our private sector was, like I'll say, we understood since the beginning that there cannot be a bank office in every small town or we, can't have, we can't, cannot have like, a government officer in every village. So we've had to push people to use internet and self-services, like, starting from ATMs. Like, so pensioners, no, like, like, no administrative uh, support. You just go and take the money out or you use a card. That's it. Like, that's the only way. So no people involved. So because we don't have enough people to serve other people. 
And that's the whole reason behind e-Estonia. E so there's no other reason. Like we have never thought that we want to be an e-country, and that's why we do all this funky stuff. No, it's a pure economical reason. Uh, and we did funky stuff. I mean, like uh, I know that there are Germans in the audience. So yeah, we have a personal number. We are not ashamed of that. We are actually proud of it. It works, and you should have it also, and you should be actually publicly show it. So we do digital signature. So if you approach Estonia with paper contract, they get suspicious. I'm a huge fan of smart contracting, so I even think that uh, it will be the next level uh, in, in, in how, the, how the society actually should work. Uh, that's the famous X road. So all like, I mean, I know Germans, please don't freak out. I mean, like, just give me 10 minutes and I will be finished. I mean, I know. Like, Every government system connected, I know, you sh you, for you it's a nightmare, I know, I understand. Uh, actually, this picture is for politicians, because it looks good. I mean, like, everything should be, sh seems to be very, very well organized. The real picture is this. <laughs> I had to draw something to the politicians, so, like, that's why we show this. But the and you see, I mean, it's connected. And it's connected because it's good. I mean, instead of uh, a person running around with papers like from one ministry to another ministry, why can't they exchange data? I mean, like, if, if, if one ministry or department needs something from another ministry, please take it from there. And it seems to be that these kind of systems actually, from cybersecurity perspective, well, way more and protected, and then can be way better protected than, than any, like, localized or centralized system. So decentralized is the future. But my point is that you can have a very efficient government when everything is connected and robots and then different systems are actually doing the job on your behalf. So for example, I mean, if something happens with you in South Estonia, like you break your leg or anything, you're treated in, 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 a, in a South Estonian hospital, but you live in North. And next week you go and re-examine your leg Everything is there. All the x-ray pictures, all the information is there. Why? Because we believe that if doctors have full understanding of your medical history, they actually could provide better healthcare. They could use that information to cure you. So instead of going to the new doctor and all, starting again from scratch, describing like, what, what kind of illnesses you had in childhood, no, everything's there. Big brother problem can be solved. It's not the big brother. I mean, in Estonia, what we have done, I mean, I, I know, like, for you it sounds like everything's connected. I mean, like, it has to be, I mean, like, a nightmare. No. It's actually quite a simple solution, how to solve it. The person become your own big brother. This is, a, uh, like, just, I looked at my, like, basically, who has looked my medical data. So I can see that, like, uh, that's, I know the first doctor, the second one, and the last one. If I see a person name there I cannot recognize, I can query why this person looked at my data. If there is no reason, they get, the guy or lady gets instantly fired. Even if, uh, if you're a high-end high top surgery, surgeon, like if you don't have a reason why you have accessed my data, out. If you give this information to the third person, most probably three years in jail. Smart contracting. That's how it should work. So, and it can be solved. So people, I'll say, are willing to give the data away because they can get like, better service in return. And you get very efficient healthcare, you get very efficient government in this way. And what's we gonna do with this all efficient government? Um, Estonia is fully digital. So what it means is that um, like, if you're fully digital, you're not dependent on location. So we can serve Estonians in Silicon Valley, we can serve Estonians in Singapore. You don't have to stay and be in Estonia like, uh, to, to use our services. You can do it from distance because we have digital signature. We even have e-voting since 2005. So with 12 years we have voted over the internet. So the machine in the corner is not e-voting. That's just the funky stuff that Germans and US are doing. But like, voting over the internet, that's the future. But what it gives us, like, um, when I was CIO, um, I had a task that, uh, that we should, we should, like I say, we should make our country great again. 
I know you have heard it before, but um, in our terms, it, it means that if you have 1.3 million nation, and like any other normal government, you want to get more wealth to your people. You want to make your own people richer. That's your ambition. Like that, like that's like every government is thinking, like how we can get like better economy, more GDP, like that's, that's, that's how we think. But if you're 1.3, like you are quite small. So I came from private sector to the government, so the way we started to think is that, okay, in private sector, if you want to get more revenue, uh, the only way to get it, like or the most common way to get it is, is to get more customers. So if you have more customers, you have more probability to sell, and if you sell more, like, that's how you grow your revenue. So, how many customers Estonia has? 1.3 million plus minus like, people who are connected with us. Hmm. What, it, what it takes to become something meaningful, like let's say Sweden, they're 9.6 or 9.3, so if you can 10, like, we, can, we could pass them. How to become a 10 million country from 1.3? It's an engineering problem. I'm an engineer, so it's easy to solve. Just do babies. That's one option. We still have slightly negative birth rates, so not for us. Another option is immigration. German, Sweden, UK, US, they all have benefited a lot from that. Uh, the problem with Estonia is that nobody wants to come. Last year, we got seven. <laughs> and that's because the quota that the Brussels puts, like, yeah, without, I mean, I think they are actually back in Germany now, but, like, <laughs> at least they were sent for, for a period, like, so. I know we don't have too many mosquitoes, but it's cold. Yeah. So, so we understood that to get more customer, and we want to grow our economy, that's the basic baseline, we want to grow our economy. Organic growth not an option, immigration not an option. So if the Muhammad is not willing to come to the mountain, the mountain has to go to the Muhammad. So we invented this. <laughs> you can become an Estonian. I mean, we can serve Estonians globally. So who says that we only have to serve Estonians? Can we serve others? So we ran a government startup. We called it e-residency. Uh, OK, let's see. I mean, let's start to give out cards. And not just for free. I mean, like, you have to pay 100 euros. You have to apply. And then you have to go physically to like, some of Estonian uh, embassies. We have 38 embassies all around the world, most of them in Europe, uh, one in Africa. Like, um, so 38 embassies. You go there, you give fingerprints. Uh, we run a uh, background check, like in different terrorism and other databases. And if everything is cool, you get your, like, let's say, digital citizenship. It's not a citizenship, it's actually like residency. So you can access all the services, like Estonians can access. You can give digital signature. You can access all the private sector services, like Estonian access them from distance, except voting. Voting, I mean, when those residents actually, how say, start contributing more to our economy than the physical ones, the real ones, then we will give, give them a voting right. And we start to give, like, look, like, what kind of people there are, like, so we know that, like, digital nomads and, like, the, the way how people, say, act today as, is changing. I mean, like, there are more and more freelancers, for example, in the world, and the number is growing rapidly. Uh, there are people like this. By the way, if there are people from UK, Thank you. Brexit, Brexit was actually organized by Estonian. I mean, perfect use case, perfect use case. You are now outside, okay, not, not yet, but soon. You are outside of Europe, but you still want to do a business with Europe. So you need some kind of like, like, like a body inside Europe that you can control from distance. Ooh, we have a product. <laughs> Brexit, perfect case. Uh, Diego, uh, the e-residence was actually designed for Diego. I mean, somebody outside of Europe doing business inside of Europe, and like we, we, we help him, him to, to, to do the business in Europe. But that was an interesting thing. That's the fastest growing area. People from Germany. Why? 
Because running a company in Germany as a, as, as a freelancer is including as much bureaucracy as BMW is responsible to do. So, paying 75 euros per month and you have totally hassle-free, no reporting, like totally automated uh, business environment. Nice, nice. They love it, and we love it. It's a huge market. The, amount, the size of the market from people who actually work with their heads is $20 trillion. So that's the amount of market of people who could provide the services location independently. They mostly spend that money where they physically live. But the fact is that if they will see a service that is cheaper, flexible, better. Remember the CD example. Inconvenient, location specific. It's a driver. And we see the, we see the, we see the change. So 25,000 people have like, paid 100 euros went to the Estonian embassy, gave fingerprints, just to become an E-Estonian. So we validated, we made it, it wasn't just a sign up, like, sign up like, to become an E-Estonian. No, it was a like, real effort. And numbers are growing rapidly, two times every year. So, you have seen this picture before. Yeah, Uber most probably should be deleted soon, but like, still it's there. For us, it's a perfect storm. For your country, it might be winter is coming. So then my point is that the thing that your people will buy all the services from the same country where they're living, that's so last century. The same kind of change is what you have seen in law industry, in music industry, in, I say, Taxi driving, it will change. So public sector is not something that stays behind. So, think in a new way, and um, let's have a panel. <laughs>